Hi everybody! Don't worry, just this is just still around. I've been thinking about doing the thing that I'm going to try and do in this video for so goddamn long it's ridiculous. Basically, uh, you can remove rust from metal using electrolysis, which can be done with a battery charger or power supply, some pieces of scrap metal, and a plastic tub. Why I haven't got around to building one of these until now, I don't know. So this video is me, basically, I've just walked in my garage and I'm like, I think I've got enough stuff for laying around here that I can knock one of these up. So let's see what I can do. Okay, so the first thing you need is a watertight container, which is non-conductive and also doesn't leak. Yes, I actually checked to see if there's leak before I built everything onto it. Aren't I smart? I have a piece of rusty old mild steel box that will be perfectly usable when I chop it up and stuff. I also have my very last length of uh, 6mm mild steel rod. I need to order more. Then you just need water. Well, that's not too hard to find today, considering there is a storm going on outside. I could probably just put the bucket outside for five minutes and it would fill up. Um, there are different methods you can use. Uh, distilled vinegar and some salt with water as your... Basically, because water is not conductive on its own, it needs a salt of some sort. Um, well, it needs something. To make it conductive, you can also use washing soda. I do hope this is the right kind of washing soda. And then you need a power supply. Now, normally you use a battery charger for a car, um, and you want something that's 12 volts, and, you know, I've seen people talking about, like, 40 amps and stuff, and it's like, if you're doing something ginormous, like half a car, then maybe, as I understand it, but 5 amps should be enough. Problem is, the only power supplies I've got is a continuous 12 volt supply, just a very basic 12 volt supply. Shush. Uh, but it's only got a 2 amp output. Now it doesn't matter necessarily, it just means it takes longer for it to do the job. The other way you can do it, as I say, is using a charger. Now hang on, I don't have a car charger to hand, but I do have the Lextech Smart Charger. What's the output on this? Output 3.3 .3 amps. Ah, that's much more like it. Now, because this is a smart charger, I'm not sure that it would work with this. I can try it, I hope it doesn't pop. Um, but there is a way of getting around the smart protection features on these sorts of chargers, if it's got that in it, which I think it probably does, um, is that you connect it to a battery, so you charge the battery and then you connect your leads from here. Uh, so this is sat in the middle, uh, makes no difference really, you're basically running it off of this battery and this is recharging it. So this is just a 12 volt motorcycle battery, it's in fact not holding a charge too well, but it does charge a, a, hold a charge for a day or so. So presumably, if this is connected all the time, this doesn't matter too much. Because I don't think it's going to be drawing that amount of power. Because it's not like you're getting a, two wires and bridging the battery, you're not. What you're getting is a connection through the water, which is only ever so much dependent on how much of this you put in, pretty much. Basically, what I need to do is have electrodes in the corners of this electrodes being mild steel. So I think what I'm going to do is probably clean this up, chop some plates out of it, or some way of it hooking over, I don't know, I'll work it out, that will go here and here. Here's something to prove that I'm not always smart. I looked at this and went, oh man, it's really not quite long enough. I mean, it kind of just does it, but it's no need, I know, so hang on, why don't you do that one? It makes a bloody difference. That's why it's really good sometimes to just stop for a second and think, because if you rush through stuff, you'll jump over that ridiculously easy thing and then you'll spend four hours like blinkered into doing this thing and then you get it done and it works and it's fine and then you think, I could have just done that, it would have taken me two minutes. Don't overcomplicate things. So that'll be on there with the electrodes that will go into here. I am going to be using six mil bar. I should probably use 10, but I don't have any. I mean, I could use strips of this tube. I don't know, I'll think about that. But it does need to be sort of even around the area. Then you need some sort of non-conductive thing to bridge across the top. This is mostly going to be just testing the setup, but if it works, it actually probably won't have any changing. Right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to buzz over this with a wire wheel and get this rust off. Remove the tank of thinners from where I'm about to start grinding. Can I give you more zoom? There you go, a tighter shot. Everyone loves it when it's tighter.
A wire wheel does not butter many parsnips when it's been outside for a year. And this is why I keep my older uh, flat discs. Well, this one's not that old to be fair. A well honed 80 grit flat disc is a fine thing. Once it gets a bit too far, it's time to give up. But you can keep those old ones for crappy jobs like this. Note, when doing up angle grinders, that is all that's required. If you do this up really tight, when it turns on, because of the way it's threaded, it'll get even tighter, and then you won't get it off. And no one likes not getting it off. Oh no, if I had an electrolysis machine, I could get this rust off real easy. Yeah, close enough is good enough. An old chefing adage. As is, fuck it, it's not my meal. I'm joking, I was a good chef. I need two pieces of the same length. No, I don't have a square for some reason. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, that's spicy. Don't you need two? Yes, I'm just going to cut this in half. Close enough. Note, I just raised the box section up because if you clamp it near the top and you cut through the top section, when it gets through it's going to clamp on the blade and that increases the risk of explosions and death. Even with the clamps at the bottom it jumped, or it grabbed. Can you see this? What has just walked out of that pipe? It's a whacking great false black widow. No, 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 this is not your home anymore. Oh, I think I might have disturbed a mother and her eggs. Tough luck. So I now have two halves a box. That I've also taken the edges off of so I don't cut my hands up. Now all I need to do is I now need to cut out that little section. So these pieces are designed to go on like that. Now I need to brace between here and here and here and here. Okay, so we've got those. Obviously you could wire this side to side just with wire, but this is a, going to be a stronger connection. And hopefully, and these are pretty standard size boxes, this top piece can be moved around. I mean, I know it's possible this might not work if these chargers aren't up to it, but I know that the thing I'm creating is good enough. I just have to get a battery, a car battery charger. Oh, they're slightly different lengths. How do I manage that one? Oh. Ah. oh right. 240 grit. To stop it wobbling around, I'm gonna put a, a little flat on one side. There we go, much less wobble. I hear a Honda Parallel Twin, that means the Reno has just got home. I'm going to use the earthing clamp to actually hold that in the right place. I hope my welder plays ball because it's been a bit weird lately. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I'm only tacking it on the top is because I didn't want to melt the um, the plastic box underneath. This doesn't even need probably much more than it's got, but I might as well do it. Okay, cool. No, 
nice. Right, all I've got to do now, because see that doesn't move in any direction, just shlonk on. Um, I've got the room, I'm just going to drill holes in each corner for the electrodes and then poke the rods through and then just weld around the top. Well, would you look at that? Bugger lugs. YouTuber, check him out. He sent me this kit. He was very kind. Yeah. Hells. I am aware that 6mm is probably going to get eaten quite quickly. Basically, in doing this, you have a sacrificial part, which is these electrodes. Uh, you can use graphite. I don't have any graphite. I don't know where I can get some. I'm sure there's something I can think of that you can rip it out of, but I haven't got any. So I'm going to just use 6mm for now. Wonderful thing is, if it gets eaten, all I've got to do is just cut them off, drill a bigger hole, put some 10mm bar in there, even threaded, and then I don't have to weld it again, maybe. But for now, I'm using the measure once, cut four times method, which basically means that if you do make a mistake on your first measurement, you will have made that mistake four times. If you want to start making stuff, like being able to just chuck stuff together like this, or like I needed a toilet roll holder, so I just made a toilet roll holder the other day. A cheap welder and a cheap angle grinder is going to cost you less than 300 quid. And you'll have the two most important things when it comes to fabricating stuff. The knowledge and skills doesn't cost anything. You just have to get out there and, well, learn from other people. And practice. That's it. That's all I've got left. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've got this bit too. I made into a hook for grabbing stuff when it falls down the back of the uh, bench. Uh, da, 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 da. Even though I've drilled a 6mm hole and this is 6mm rod, it doesn't go through it. Reason being, well one, I didn't waller out my holes, but two, uh, this bar is oversized. I've noticed this and it's also inconsistent, but then it is just rod, so you can't really say a lot. So you just got to pin it down on the end. Right, just want to run some sandpaper over these. I know they're going to get corroded themselves, but you know, might as well make it look reasonably okay. I'm being dumb. It doesn't matter how straight they are, because I can just bend them afterwards. They've just got to hold in. And out. Okay, so as you can now see, we have electrodes and a lot of crap in there. Ah, uh, look, we have a little look. What can we reach? Oh, yes, my welding mask. I want it to be at least as deep, so give myself an extra inch. It's always good to give yourself an extra inch. Here's a tip if you chop rod in half, you always end up with a sharp end. And you know, you grind that end and then you know you're okay. Grind the end of the stock that you cut it off of as well, because next time you go to grab that stock, you are going to slice your hand open. Okay, so we have our water. We have our electrode. Then attach our positive electrode onto here. And then we want this to go onto here. Let's just check. Yep. I think it's a little bit deeper than that. I am using a small piece of rusty motorcycle chain. It's not too rusty, it's just, it's enough rusty that it would be a problem. If I could get this to all come off in one go, that'd be great. So, this is the bit that's going to be difficult to see, because obviously from your direct downwards view, you can't see what's going on under here, but I'm just going to hook that over there. We all, oh, we instantly have bubbles, even though I've not actually added any soda yet. No, as suspected, it's going into power protection mode. But it worked for a second. 
Um, let's try this 12 volt supply I've got. Handily, my clips have actually got one of these connector blocks and it's quite easy to uh, just bend the little pins down so you can do this now. Here's something else if you don't know about cables, they nearly always have a, a mark to let you know which side is which. So it will have like a ridge down one side. So if you feel and careful it's not the ridge from it being split. Right, there is a ridge on the outside of the negative, so I can go down and feel the ridge on the other end and have negative again. So, negative, positive. Is it going to just pop its fuse instantly or is it going to work? Let's find out. Hold on. Can you see the bubbles? It's working! It's working! I've just uh, shoved these in the hole for now. Um, but yeah, it's just that goes to there, that to there. Okay, well I'm going to leave this on for um, half an hour or so and see how it looks. It might need a lot longer, but that's actually bubbling quite vigorously. I'm quite pleased. And you can see all the cruds coming off with it as well. Exciting stuff. Okay, it's only been about half an hour and really you tend to leave these things, depending on how rusty it is, for you know, 12 hours. 24 hours you can just leave them on as long as you've got the ventilation it should be fine I've left the garage door open because the thing is this will produce hydrogen um, I believe I'll probably find out more about that in the future as I try and collect some of it it's still bubbling as I say um, power supply is not even hot so that's very happy doing this and it's got it's fused and it's not got particularly high fuse in it but it's, it's still going fine don't ever touch it when it's on depending on the power supply you put on it you give you a bit of a nasty whack Okay, so we need a comparison. That's what it looked like before. A hey, half hour and it's greasy, it doesn't help. Um, that's not bad. Okay, well it's the morning after and this is interesting because the water's now settled and you can see why these parts are sacrificial. It's what it creates this sludge on those electrodes, but whatever, they are meant to do that. Um, but as you can see, it's very clear and it'll be interesting to see if this works when I turn it on. Okay. The hook is uh, bubbling. But nothing else. Tear it up, turn it on. Yeah, and the whole thing's starting to go again. Right. Okay, so we know this power supply can do it, but it doesn't seem very powerful. We know that the battery charger has got more power in it uh, to do this, but if we connect it directly, it gets all like, oh, no, don't do that. So as I was saying, the way you can get around this is put the negative on there. Yeah, there's negative. And I'll probably just wedge that under there for now. And yet we've got bubbling, it is, it's not a huge amount for sure, uh, but let's now attach the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, and plug it in, and it's flashing and saying it's charging, it's not turned itself off, and bubbling has increased. Okay, because I'm using chain on this, let me just turn this off. Hang on, that's trickier now. <laughs> um, you go there. Uh, I'll have to put a switch in or something. That chain is greasy, it's not got a huge amount of rust on it. It's a bit difficult to say how well it's going, but you know, it did definitely take some of the rust off. So, as a proper test, I have a piece of very rusty mild steel box. Actually change your plan. I'm going to change the water in here because I've realised this water is really cold and it is really cold at the moment. It's like zero degrees and that massively slows this down. So I'm going to take this opportunity to not use soda. I'm going to try using vinegar, water and salt. Obviously the nice thing is you just take the top off and then just pull that out. Yeah look at the corrosion on these electrodes. Actually has that got through the surface much? Has it done a lot? No, it's just on the surface. Right, let's get rid of this. And nothing is happening. Because it shouldn't, because I haven't added any salt yet. I don't know how much salt I'm going to add. I don't know how much water is in there. I'm going to guess there's probably about 8 litres of water. 
Uh, I'm going to start adding some salt. Half a cup of salt. Hey, we've got way more going on now. Some people suggest, as I say, putting distilled vinegar in this. And you would do that because vinegar in itself can get rust off of stuff, but I'm kind of interested to know what this can do on its own. But then this is super cheap, so it wouldn't matter if I do add it. Well, that's working a treat, but now I'm wondering, maybe it was just because it was too cold before when I was using this battery. Uh -huh! Hold on. Okay, so just directly off the battery, we have more fizzing, as I thought we probably would. Which makes me want to... Sorry, I know you can't see. Yes, it does make a difference. So you see now we have some serious bubbling going on. So I'm going to leave that for a while and just see what happens. Okay, it's been an hour and ten minutes and I think you can tell that the water has taken on a bit of a rusty tone. The charger is still flashing away, it's not that hot, which means it's keeping the charge up on the battery and the battery's not hot in the slightest, so this is a very good system as we can see so far. You can probably hear it. It's fizz. Right. Well, let's disconnect that. And have a look. Okay, so, it is not rusty looking anymore. Inside or out. There is a black sludgy coating. But that's quite normal. Okay, so it looks like that, with a little bit of scrubbing on a scouring pad. Not much. We're showing clean metal. And as I say, it's only been in for an hour, so I'm going to leave it for uh, a bit longer. And see how we go, because it's still fizzing a lot, and if it's fizzing, then it means it's working. When all the rust's gone, it should actually stop fizzing. Okay, so it's been three hours. Uh, the charger is still cool, just slightly warm, but cooler than it was earlier. Battery is perfectly cool. Uh, the lights show that it's fully charged, so that's keeping up no problem. I really do need to put a switch in this, just so I can go click. But, uh, for now... In fact, I'm turning this off now, so I'll completely disconnect everything. So, the surface we cleaned up earlier on hasn't changed much at all. Uh, let's just give this a quick scrub. Okay, well there we go. It's uh, very smooth. There's no pitting in this. Yeah, it still leaves it behind some crud, but it's not rust and it comes off relatively easily. And that was only in there for three hours, and you normally leave these things on for like 24. Very pleased with it. Well, there you go. If you found this video interesting, useful, entertaining at least, don't forget to leave a like, maybe subscribe to my channel if you're not. I do lots of things, I do lots of different types of videos, but I do stuff like this um, from time to time, and I kind of want to do a bit more of it. Ah, there's so many things you can do. I am thinking the HHO generator. Right, I'm going to shut up, because otherwise I'm going to keep waffling on. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you feel like supporting my channel, there are ways to do that. Links in the description. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.